dream is something we all want, but it's easy to forget about some factors that can affect it hugely. Make sure these 10 factors aren't holding you back and you'll already be 10 steps ahead of the competition. What's up, Pro Guides fam? I'm Boggs, and today we're talking about the 10 big factors that affect your aim. All of these things are extremely important, and if you miss these steps, your aim could seriously suffer. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. Good aim is of course something that everyone strives for, and as I'm sure almost everyone here knows, practice plays a large part in getting you there. For that to hold true though, you need, at the very least, one thing, and that's decent gear. Having some good gear goes a really long way, and of course that doesn't mean you need to spend $500 on buying the newest lightweight wireless mouse, or even that doing that would automatically make you play better than if you were to use a $50 mouse. But it does mean that upgrading your gear can be highly beneficial, especially if you're currently on the lower end. I clearly remember visiting one of my silver buddies and playing on their PC only to notice that they were still using a stock Dell mouse with obvious tracking issues which instantly made me realize that with some gear you're simply handicapped. The mouse he was using made it so that whenever he would make quick adjustments the mouse would just not respond at all and just get stuck in place. Needless to say, that can seriously hurt you in game and it will make it so that you can never learn the fundamentals of flicking. So if nothing else, just make sure you're using a decent mouse that can track perfectly, either a wireless or a wired used in combination with bungee or tape. And make sure you're also rocking at least an okay mouse pad which works well with your sensor. Of course it's always better to try multiple options to see which one works best for you, but that may not be in everyone's budget and honestly, it's not a must either. Another important part of your aim though which isn't often talked about is mentality and headspace. Going into a game stressed, feeling down, or even just tilted is going to affect the way you aim and there's nothing you can do about it. If you had a bad day even outside of Counter-Strike and you decide to queue for a game, you are inevitably going to play worse than you would otherwise. If you have an important exam coming up which you know you should be studying for but decide to play instead, the same thing happens and your performance is going to suffer. In order to aim the best you can, feeling the best you can plays a tremendous role and can make or break the way you aim. Our advice would be to try to fix any issues you might be having outside of games before you hop into a comp or a pug. It can help you avoid bad days and will make the games that you do end up playing so much more enjoyable. Speaking of always playing your best though, if you want to improve and learn how to play at a higher level, make sure to check out our website ProGuides.com. There we have a great variety of coaches and courses which can help you tremendously in finding and fixing your mistakes or even just learning about new concepts and to incorporate into your play. Always wanted to become an in-game leader? Fallen's got you covered. Want to learn about pro concepts from one of the very best pros himself? Simple's your guy. All of that over on ProGuides.com. Anyway, let's get back into the video. The next thing you should work on is confidence. Confidence is one of those things that is just simply criminally underrated even though it's one of the biggest deciders in who wins and loses duels. If you're lacking confidence and you feel like everything you're doing is either wrong or will fail, well then that probably becomes reality. If you're peaking an opponent but in your mind you're already expecting to lose that duel, then you may as well give up because more likely than not, indeed you will. Not to mention that playing without confidence is also extremely unfun. Confidence in CS is simply key, not only because thinking you'll play better will also make you play better, but also because if you're peaking confidently you're making full use of peaker's advantage, which is a big part of playing games online, especially CS. The million dollar question then of course is how do you gain confidence? And that's pretty hard to answer. Getting confidence is different for everyone. Some people can play a game of deathmatch and get a high lane. Some people get it from killing a thousand bots. Others are simply born with it, and it's up to you to find out what makes you confident, and do it as much as possible. Next up to consider, your role. Your role is one of those things that may not seem like they impact your aim massively, but once you break it down, it really does. For one, if you're playing a hard entry role, you're required to use your aim a lot more. You're gonna be clearing a lot of angles quite rapidly and you won't have time to carefully place your crosshair for each of them. So naturally that means you're going to be spending a lot more of your time flicking. If you go one second and have to focus on trading, then you can see how that's already instantly a lot less. You'll have a pretty good idea of where the opponents are and pre-aiming them is quite easy. If you're a support player, you also won't have to aim as much if your team is successful, you know the side's clear. And otherwise, you want to be taking your time to clear each angle separately anyway. It may not seem like a big deal at first, but it's something you definitely should consider, as playing a role that relies heavily on aim when perhaps you aren't so confident in it may not be the best idea. Something else entirely that's important as well is comfort. Being comfortable when playing goes a very, very long way. If you're not comfortable or perhaps even feel like something is off, it's instantly going to be a lot harder to focus on the game as there's always that little nagging thought of discomfort. If something's off, it's just so much harder to play and aim properly and it almost feels like you can't even get into the game. To avoid that, you have to know what you need to be comfortable. 
Do you have a consistent sitting position? Does your monitor need to be a certain amount away from your face? Do you need to be on the same settings? Maybe you need to go through a specific warm-up routine. Whatever it is that gets you comfy, make sure you keep that consistent or at least as consistent as possible in order to avoid feeling off and having bad games. Having mentioned that, that brings us to our consistent ritual of the question of the day. Today's fitting question being, what aspect do you think affects aiming the most? For me, personally, it's gotta be tilt. If I'm tilted, not only do I begin to notice I'm constantly making terrible decisions, but I also whiff the easiest shots of all time. It's honestly quite frustrating, but I suppose I just shouldn't get tilted. What about you guys, though? What do you all think affects aiming the most? Make sure to comment down below, as I'm curious what you all think. Anyway, let's get back into the video. Next up on the list, positioning. Positioning is another one of those things that can truly make or break your aim. Depending on your positioning, you're either making your shots incredibly easy, or you're forcing yourself to have to hit insane flicks constantly. Especially to new players, positioning and what are good and bad angles may not be so obvious, but as you gain more experience, you really should be paying attention to making your shots as easy as possible, while also making it more difficult for your opponents. Just to give away some hints though, you generally want to avoid holding straight angles as these angles maximize the peaker's advantage for your opponents and make holding them significantly more difficult. The reason for that is pretty simple. If you're running out sideways and your opponent is holding a straight angle, that means you'll be zooming across their screen at full speed and you also won't have to make any adjustments to your pre-aim. By holding an angle where your opponent will have to traverse into your crosshair sideways instead, you'll be limiting their on-screen speed, making them easier to hit, while simultaneously also making your angle more awkward for them to peek and forcing your opponent to counter-strafe with more keys. Well, we've managed to avoid the topic thus far, but it's time we quickly bring it up. And let's talk about crosshair placement. Crosshair placement is of course the most important part of aim and the very first lesson anyone that starts playing Counter-Strike learns. Crosshair placement, crosshair placement, crosshair placement. I'm sure you've all heard about it a million times, but honestly, it's more than just placing your crosshair at head level. It's also getting a feel for how wide you should be holding angles, how far out a player will be when you haven't seen them for a certain amount of time, and how you adapt to your enemy's playstyle. If you notice certain opponents love to wide swing, you should instinctively already put your crosshair a bit wider, as you're anticipating it happening again. That's really what crosshair placement is all about. Crosshair placement should really be an extension of your game sense. You should preemptively aim at the spots where you feel there could be an opponent, and you should adjust your crosshair according to how you expect your enemies to play. Speaking of awareness and game sense, that could obviously also have a big effect on your aim. If you don't really know where your opponents are, running at them looking the wrong way is obviously a huge disadvantage. Without constantly having a good idea of where your opponents are, aiming at them and killing them only becomes that much more difficult. And the other way around, if you're very aware and have a really solid idea of where your opponents most likely are, you can almost be so certain that you don't even have to aim and can simply pre-fire instead. Gaining game sense and awareness though is pretty difficult and is going to take time. If you're starting out, the least you can do is try to learn the maps and see where if both teams rush, you'll first meet. If your aim is lacking because of this reason, it's quite hard to find a quick solution, but as long as you keep playing, it'll eventually be fixed. Then sleep, health, and focus. Focus is a very important part of aim, as if you're unfocused, you're going to be a lot slower and less precise. Sometimes though, especially in certain conditions, it can be hard to maintain. If you're playing all day without any breaks, for example, losing focus after a couple of hours isn't at all uncommon. Similarly, being full focus on your game is a lot more difficult if you didn't get a good night's sleep. And the same thing holds true for health. Getting good focus and maintaining it is a lot easier if you live and eat healthy. Perhaps if you've ever watched pro vlogs, you'll often see them visiting the gym, even during events. And that's for a very good reason. Working out regularly and staying fit has great benefits and can, among other things, really help out your focus. Guys, even if it's not for CS, taking good care of yourself and your body is really important and should not be taken lightly. And in any case, you only do it for Counter-Strike, well then it's still very much worth it. Finally, let's talk about monitors, refresh rates, and FPS. We all know that a good PC dishes out solid performance and lots of FPS can really help, and that's simply true. Similarly, having a higher refresh rate monitor combined with that high FPS really smooths things up and makes the game more responsive. So if you have the money for it and a passion for games, getting yourself a solid PC and monitor is a great idea. That being said, I'd like to get rid of the misconception that having a better PC and monitor will instantly make you play better, since it won't. If I play on a friend's PC and they have a particularly bad PC or monitor, I'll notice, and honestly my performance will go down quite a bit, but that doesn't work the other way around. And believe me, I've tried. Getting one of my silver buddies on my PC with a consistent 500 FPS and a 240Hz display does not instantly make them a global. It doesn't even take them to Gold Nova. 
What a bigger and better setup does allow, though, is a higher aiming potential. If you get used to the smoother experience, less input lag, and consistent feeling that a better setup offers, you're able to get your aim and reactions to a higher level than you would without them. But as always, that comes with training. Either way though guys, that's going to have to be it for now, so if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and don't forget to check out our website. Over on ProGuides.com we feature some of the best coaches and courses, and there truly is something there for anyone, regardless of what rank you might be now. Either way, I wish you all a great rest of your day, and best of luck in your rank games. Bye bye.